Hey, Vinyl Community, welcome to 8 a.m. Thursday, November 30th. That's what this is what 8 a.m. looks like. I probably have a bad head, but we're all friends here. Um, really behind, uh, as it always seems to be showing you um, my pickups of late. Um, before I get going, I need my coffee this morning. I had another back procedure yesterday. Not that you all care, some of you might. I've been getting lumbar spine injections every two weeks and they knock you out for a few days. I'm supposed to be laying down on this little thing I have. Um, I hate to use the word chaise lounge. It doesn't sound very manly, but that's what I have over here. I'm supposed to be laying down for two days solid. So I'm gonna film this video. Um, I'm gonna break my, I, like I have stacks I'm supposed to be showing you all. I'm gonna break it up into different parts like I always say. First of all, I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for watching uh, my videos of late. Uh, really, really quickly, um, not to make this intro go too long, I had a video on yesterday. Some of you might have saw it, but if you blinked, you missed it. Uh, it was showing off a new amp uh, or receiver I got, a Harman Kardon 430 twin powered receiver. Uh, I woke up this morning and the video has gone. Uh, I don't know if it's because I was playing a Yes album, and like I am now, uh, but I don't know. If you're wondering if you're gonna ask where that video went, I don't know. So, um, really quickly, I'm going to show you something that's not vinyl. Some people like things other than vinyl. I showed some 8-tracks a couple of videos ago. I had a cassette haul, and I love picking up cassettes I had when I was young. Some of them I kept when I was, you know, pre-teen, a teenager. Um, but some of them just kind of went by the wayside, as, as you do, as uh, a, a lot of us got sucked into that C uh, CD age. I don't know if that requires bunny ears this time, CD age. A lot of us traded in our cassettes. So when I see them for a quarter, 50 cents, whatever, I pick them up. So when I got a cassette haul, I'll be really quick with these. Um, so I know some people are interested in cassettes, but Motorhead, Orgasmatron, these are all metal. So if you're into metal, I hope your ears picked, uh, picked up, perked up. It's early. Motorhead, Orgasmatron. Probably one of the more underrated albums in their catalog. Uh, Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind. Number of the Beast. Like I said, every single one of these was one I had when I was young. Uh, Judas Priest, Day in Class. <clears throat> Excuse me. Testament, Practice What You Preach. Uh, Anthrax, State of Euphoria. Megadeth, Peace Cells. Misfits, Legacy of Brutality. Almost done, cassette fans. Almost done. Queensryche, Operation Mindcrime. Okay, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. When I say I, I played an album out when I was young, I didn't have a lot of albums when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13. So you play the albums you have a lot. I, pl I literally played this cassette out. I really did. Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance. Another Motorhead, um, No Sleep at All, a really good live album. And uh, two more Judas Priest, Painkiller. And point of entry. That was my cassette haul. I, I just, I just for nostalgia reasons. And I have a cassette deck right behind me here. And the odd time I will get all nostalgic and play cassettes. Because why not? Okay, let's get to the vinyl. Um, if you saw my Rhino Rocktober campaign video, and if you haven't, watch it. It's really good. Anyways. Uh, there was one album, and I was putting off filming that video for the longest time because there was one album that just was not showing up in any stores. And then I found out, I still have some connections in the business. Uh, Warner Music, who distributes Rhino in Canada, the order for this album was locked, was the explanation, in their system. So they had it sitting in their warehouse, it just wasn't shipping to any stores for, from for some computer glitch. Having said that, the minute that was discovered, I got my copy. So thank you for to Warner Music Canada for finally finding that glitch. Because I got the one missing album um, from the Rhino Rock Tope. And watch that video. I mean, it's really, really entertaining. Probably not. Testament, The Legacy, on green vinyl. I've never actually had this on vinyl. I've always had this on cassette and CD. Uh, so when I saw this pop up on the Rocktober campaign, um, there's the Rocktober campaign sticker there. 
So if you're interested in this, it's available at your local independent record store, uh, or in the States, I think it's Barnes & Nobles, and then also other independent record stores. In Canada, we don't have a Barnes & Noble type thing that is considered independent, so go to your local record store. Um, I don't think there's even any chain stores in Canada left. There might be one. Testament. <laughs> That's a long way around to get to. I love this album. I love Testament. And other than the T-Rex from that campaign, this is one of the ones I was most excited to get on green vinyl. So that was the missing one from the Rhino Rocktober campaign. The other, only other new album I got was one that me and my it's very rare, I talk about this sometimes, it's really rare that me and my wife can enjoy an album together. Um, Depeche Mode being one of them, there's a few other albums. Um, this this band, I was well, I've been uh, a fan of their first couple albums and then for me they kind of just dipped a bit. And uh, I saw them open up for Depeche Mode a few times in Europe in front of like stadium crowds, like 80,000. And they really, they went through this little dip to me and if you don't like the horrors, skip by this. They went through a little dip and my wife had seen them on their last tour and their live performances just didn't really captivate her. They really, really kicked ass on this tour. They really brought it and I was really excited to get the new album and the new album is awesome and I sampled it before because I just didn't, didn't want to get taken by another subpar horrors album. Anyways, the new album is called V. It's in a faux kind of Japanese uh, OB strip but it has a kind of a Japanese theme kind of like the last Blur album. But it's good. It's back to form. It's a little bit. Uh, it's a bit of their old sound with some modern sounds on it. Um, yeah, it was, you have to listen to. It. You have to be into modern kind of. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. We have a name for it in Edmonton. We call it alt wiggle. It's kind of alt music you can dance to, but it's you know it still retains a lot of that kind of slightly goth overtones. Anyways, if you're into the horrors, I highly recommend this album. It's called V. And I was really amazed how uh, they've really made a strong comeback on that album. All right, let's get to these used finds, cheap finds, whatever you want to call them. Um, I had some amazing finds yesterday and just kind of, yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, and, it, and I'm going to guess it's purely just out of, I have no life. I have my family, I have work and I just go look for records in thrift stores and any other place that'll sell me cheap vinyl. A lot of psych stuff here, a lot of some progressive rock here, some, man, it's all over the map, but um, yeah, some of this is really exciting. And I'll preface this all by saying, I sometimes when I found this in the rack at, this, at, the, at the cheap store, I didn't know what it was. I, I really did have to go on Discogs or I had to Google it, because um, I never proclaimed myself to be all knowing. A lot of it I was aware of. This is an example where if I, I didn't know what it was and I knew by the title, I looked at the inner gatefold, this is gonna be something pretty cool. And it was. Psych fans, watch this video. There's some cool stuff. Ford Theater Trilogy for the Masses. I'm trying to remember when this is released now. Um, I don't research these before I, I click record, by the way. Something tells me this is 1968 on ABC Records. And there's the gatefold. That's the gatefold I saw. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be something kind of slightly psychedelic weird. And it is. And it's really good. Um, fourth Theater Trilogy for the Masses. And I, I'm not going to go into stories about all these albums. Don't worry. They're going to come fast and furious. But please, if you have this album or if you want to sample it online, listen to the first song and tell me you don't hear the melody for Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Sounds crazy. Listen to it. The first song on this album, I don't know. I, I think I know where they got this tune, that tune from, Bonnie Tyler, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Listen to the first song on this album. And the melody for that song is in this whole first song. I swear. Listen to it. Comment below. Ford Theater, uh, Trilogy for the Masses, 1968. Psychedelic rock weirdness. I've never owned a Doors album without Jim Morrison until... Other voices, I never would. I would never even consider it. But for a dollar, eh. Original gatefold. It's an original Electro Records Canada pressing. I've yet to listen to this. I've yet to listen to really any Doors without Jim Morrison. And my first foray into Morrisonless Doors. Another really obscure. 
I mean, the word psych gets thrown around. I always say this, the word psych is kind of one of the most overused words next to the word rare in the vinyl community. Rare, everything's rare on eBay. Um, and the word psych gets thrown around a lot. And this is more like um, a rock blues with psych tinges, uh, tinges to it. Anyways, there's a longer uh, name to this band. It's Thomas A. Edison Electric Band. I had to, that's a mouthful. And it's called Bless You, Dr. Woodward. Uh, on, the, on the album it says Edison Electric Band, but as far as I can tell on the internet, it's called Thomas A. Edison Electric Band. Bless You, Dr. Woodward, 1970. It's an original uh, 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 Cotillion. I, I've talked about this label before. I can never pronounce the Cotillion records pressing. Original US pressing as well, too. Pretty cool find, and it's a pretty good album. I'll, I'll give you that. Anyways. Just for the sake of time, when, I, uh, when I'm talking this album out here, the outro for this album, it's the Edison Electric Band. Thank you, Dr. Or bless you, Dr. Woodward. Steve Hillage, Green. Uh, Steve Hillage, you might know him from the band Gong or Khan. And there's a, there's a local guy I bump into at record fairs, and um, I bought records off him. James, really super nice guy, really knowledgeable. He's been talking about this album a lot when I see him every now and again. And this, it's his favorite Steve Hillage album. And I found this on the cheap yesterday. And I have to say he's right. This album is just... It blew my mind how good this album is. Um, I, the only other Steve Hillage album I have is uh, L. And this is by far, wow. If you want to hear a really good Steve Hillage, spacey, great album, Green. And this is really cool. It's on the uh, one of my favorite record labels. The two girl virgin one. And yes, I'm touching my vinyl. For those of you who like to comment about that. Uh, of all the ones I'm going to show you, and I do have a, a quick two minute story about this one. This is the one I'm most excited about for nostalgic personal reasons. Because I might show this to you and you'll go. Anyways, very rare that you've. I, I have this now on CD, but there's a backstory to this album. Very, very, very rarely will you find this album on vinyl, but it's the Nazareth. The, the, the Nazareth. It's, it's if the Naz met Nazareth. It's Nazareth, the very, very best of from 1984. It's a double album. Um, other than being a really big Nazareth fan, um, why this album is kind of meaningful and why when I found it on the cheap yesterday, I kind of... <clears throat> um, my sister got this for me, this vinyl, for Christmas for me in 1984. 85, 84, around there. And the, the reason why she got it for me was her boyfriend at the time, who was driving around some souped up uh, Camaro, you can tell it's the 80s. He used to blast this cassette in his car, and she thought I would like it. And then um, as time went on, I, kinda, I don't know what happened to the record. I, I've had a lot of records I've kind of either sold for rent money when I was young, or ex-girlfriends have taken a lot of those. <clears throat> this one, I don't know what happened to it, but I just kind of like, I don't really see my... Okay, where's my... I, I need tissue for this one. Get tissue for this one. I don't see my sisters anymore. Anyways, I don't... I, I, I have three sisters, no brothers. I grew up with all sisters. And I don't see them anymore. I haven't seen them in 10 years, probably, for various reasons. They don't live in my city. So, uh, even though I don't, I don't talk or see my sisters anymore, I kind of, you know, there are little kind of things I remember from when I was young that kind of, you know, makes me want to reach out to them. If you watch my videos... Call, call me, sisters. They won't. Nazareth, the very, very best of on vinyl, double record. I don't know where that sister story went. It's just kind of a... When I, the minute I saw this record on vinyl, I went back to that Christmas when I got that record for my sister. Anyways. Like I said, a lot of these stories are for when I'm dead and gone and my family rewatch these videos. On the odd... Or the, uh, maybe the odd time they might miss me. The nice, uh, Arv's Longa, yeah, Art of Brevis. I, I hate saying this album title. Arv's Longa Vita Brevis. <laughs> On, uh, this is an, an original Immediate Records pressing. Uh, well, I say original. I didn't Google this, but it's a, it's a London, UK pressing. The address is from London on Immediate Records, so 
uh, whether it's original or not, I'm just saying that. It could be, may not be, but it's, it's. I'm going to say it might be. This is the nice uh, second album. Um, you either like the nice or you don't. I've showed nice albums before and nobody really seems to care. But anyways. All right. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I'm trying to think of when this was. Help me out, Vinyl Community. I'm going to be wrong saying this. 19. It's late 60s, anyways. Um, it's an original Columbia record, 2 eye pressing. And uh, I'm not even sure where this one was pressed, even. If it's Canada or U.S. Anyways, uh, it's a beautiful day. It's kind of a rock, psychedelic, tinged album. Some of you might know it. Some of you might not. That's a pretty cool thing to find, in my estimation. And just for the sake of showing you, there's the gatefold. I've never actually heard this album before, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, I've, I've heard the album. I've never actually owned the vinyl, is what I meant to say. Um, a lot of people show this on vinyl communities, and a lot of people seem to be big fans of this album. Um... And now, now that I say that, I don't think I've ever heard this album from beginning to end. I think I've just sampled bits and pieces over the years. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. I don't think the cover is representative of the album, necessarily. Um, yeah. Underground Sunshine, Let There Be Light. Definitely a uh, Sunshine Psych album, pop album. Um found this and I found I thought you know this is gonna be a great great psych album I got one of those sunshine pop albums psych pop albums eh, it's it's okay I'll try to be honest with you all I did read the backstory of this album it's kind of an interesting read but uh, yeah uh, it's a lot of covers I guess their cover of the Beatles birthday was the big hit off this album or big it was it was a, uh, a kind of hit anyways there's a lot of covers on here, oddly. There's only a couple originals. Anyways, there's the back for y'all. This is one of those times where I was really excited. I thought I found some really cool psych pop rarity, and it's... It might be, I don't know, but it's... Eh. It's okay. Didn't blow me away. Uh, Joe Walsh. The smoker you drink, the player you get. Another one I've never really owned on vinyl. Uh, so I have uh, Rocky Mountain Way on vinyl now. There you go. Uh, some of you might have seen these on the vinyl community that I posted. Um, and I, I'm not trying to be gaudy by having the price stickers on. I'm just realizing now I forgot to peel the price stickers. I'm really behind on cleaning up some of these records I'm finding at cheap stores. Fever Tree. I will just say no. Dollar fifty. Anyways, um, I can't remember what YouTuber posted this album as one of the best albums that you see all the time. That I guess you know I can't remember what the, what the context of the video was, but it's it is one of the best psych albums that you kind of see you kind of see somewhat um, consistently at record fairs and stuff. Pick it up; it is actually really really good. I can't remember who filmed that video now. Anyways, you'll know who you are. Fever Tree. This is a really really good psych album. And another, I, I do have a copy of this already. So, uh, I guess I got two. Frigid Pink, first album. And like I said, I wasn't trying to be gaudy. But, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm really behind peeling stickers and whatnot. Original pressing of Frigid Pink's first album. Uh, where are we going to go from here? I only got a few left. And then, uh, I got enough video, I got enough, uh... Stuff left over for a few videos anyways. Ultravox, the collection. I like Ultravox. And yes, it's very fashionable to say that I only like the Ultravox with um, John Fox. Uh, which is good. That version of Ultravox is fine. But uh, this this version of the band with Mid-Year is the one that had all the hits. So if you're into hits, I like this album. Anyways, I, I had this album before and I sold it to a friend of mine who was really, really wanting it. So now I got another copy of it, thank God. This album, I see this album all the time. It's on Beggar's Banquet. I, I just never thought about picking it up, but for a dollar, I'll pick it up. It's The Doll. Listen to the silence. 
The Doll featuring, what's her name, Marion Valentine. I see this album, I don't know, all the time. Not at thrift stores so much, but at record fairs and whatever. I just picked it up because it was part of this lot I picked up and it was a dollar. And Beggar's Banquet, the record label Beggar's Banquet, they're a pretty consistently okay label for me. So, we'll give that a spin later. Canadians. In the States, you might think, what the hell is this? Or maybe you know Trooper in the States, but this is their greatest hits called Hot Shots. You find this all the way everywhere in Canada. This is an original copy with the, uh, the bullet holes. And a, a quick fact about this album, and I'm not going to go too far into it. At one point, this album was the biggest selling Canadian album within Canada of all time by a Canadian artist. I think that was, that's been displaced now many times over. But at one point, this was the biggest selling album in Canada of all time by a Canadian band. Super Hot Shots. Um, I think I showed you an Adamant album last time and I found another one for a dollar. Prince Charming. Another album I do have, but this part of that haul. And uh, this is, I think this is going to end it. What are we at? Not bad. A little bit below my normal time. Um, as far as 80s stuff goes, I really do like the uh, the band Haircut 100. Stupidest name. Not as dumb as A Flock of Seagulls. But they had one album called Pelican West. Which, of all the albums in the 80s, that's probably one of the most credible albums of its time. Uh, Pelican West. The lead singer, Nick Hayward, who kind of left the band after the first album, who kind of went a little bit, uh, kind of went, went a bit crazy. He wanted to have a solo career. But uh, I don't really ever see Nick Kershaw, Vi or Nick Kershaw, Nick Hayward. They're both 80s. Nick Hayward. Uh, I really don't see his solo albums around a lot in Canada. But uh, I found North of a Miracle on vinyl for a buck. And I'll give that a try because I love that album, Pelican West, a lot. And if you don't know that album, have a sample of it. They dress really silly in, the, in that era of the Haircut 100. But if you can ignore the clothes, it was all part of a look of a concept by Nick Haywood. The guy is a little bit of a genius, to be honest with you, but I'm not going to go into that one. Anyways, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you very much for watching my videos once again. I appreciate it. Um, I hope I kind of made sense for being so early. And stay tuned for more videos of Thrift Store Finds. I have a few other videos coming up. And uh, yeah, thanks for always. Uh, thanks, thanks for always for watching. It's 8 a.m. Take care, everyone.